Okay. All right. Hey, Karen. Again, how's it going? <laughs> it's going wonderful. Thank you so much for having me today. I'm really of excited. Of course. To be here. Yeah, I know. We were just talking about time zones. So Karen is in Dubai right now, right? Yeah. Yeah, Dubai. Right. Okay, so you're 12. Yeah, so I'm in Idaho. We're Pacific time. So she's, I'm not sure. What's your time zone called there? I think it's GMT plus four. Is that what but it's called? But I call it Dubai time. I don't know. Yeah, Dubai time. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So she's 12 hours from me. So I'm 7 a.m. and she's 7 p.m. right now, which is really cool. So I thought that was neat. We're kind of, I can see her outside dark and so is mine right now, kind of. <laughs> so anyway, this is fun. Okay. Well, welcome, Karen. Thank you so, for, so much for being here. I was telling everybody um, that I was really looking forward to this because last time we talked on the phone, I had so many questions about understanding hormone balance and trying to figure this all out for my community, for my group, for my course, and just for myself and trying to figure out, okay, is what I'm sharing is what I'm teaching or what we, that what we're doing together, is that actually like, are we on the right path? I just wanted to like get some reassurance really from her to hear her perspective. So, um, that's why I wanted to have Karen on today to share with us directly from her mouth and, um, give us some more details and insight about how to help balance hormones for body fat loss ultimately, but not just body fat loss, just for that reason, but for our overall wellness. And as she told me, which was really cool about how wellness is like an onion and it has different levels and there's body fat loss is just one of those. And I just kind of wanted to let her share more about that because I thought it was really fascinating. I just love that philosophy and style that we, we're just so, so like she told me before, we're so numbers oriented in our culture, like, oh, measuring this and weighing that and counting calories and weighing yourself. And then it just gets hectic. It's more like confusing and chaotic and scary. Um, so I thought that'd be really cool for her to kind of, we can kind of discuss this. She can share her insight about this. But um, before we dive in, let me introduce her so you all know who she is and what she does and her expertise and everything. So, so Karen Rudolph, she's a certified hormone health specialist specializing in cycle health, um, hormone balancing, nervous system regulation and management and gut healing um, specializes in all of this because everything is connected to natural hormonal health and balance. Um, I, she helps women to drop weight sustainably, but more importantly, focusing on longevity and teaching them how to age beautifully, healthily, and gracefully. That's totally what we're about here. So this is perfect. <laughs> it's like wanting to age your best, not just age and just succumb to whatever is coming my way with age or whatever people traditionally think of, you know, oh, I just, my health declines, my quality of life declines, all of that. But yeah, we're here to learn how to optimize your health, regardless of what age you're at. So anyway, so yeah, like I said, I've been so looking forward to this conversation about natural hormone balance and how diet and how the food that we eat can really affect our hormone balance at this season of life over 40. Um, and then how we can kind of break, like I said, those traditional thought patterns or cycles of what maybe we saw our mother do or generations ahead of us just kind of succumb to whatever comes their way as far as their health and longevity. Um, and then even like, you know, understanding how hormonal balance can have negative health outcomes, but how we can balance them to live our best over time. So anyway, so welcome Karen again. Um, so before we dive in further, tell me a little bit about yourself and the population that you serve right now. Yeah, so hormonal health is can be such a broad topic with starting from teen, teens that start with, with their, their cycle up to women in their 65, 70s that also still are cyclical beings, even though they're not getting their menstrual cycle as such. But the, the majority of women that are in my world at the moment is between the ages of about 38 to about 50. But I do help women even um, older. I still work with my with my mom's friends as well because, you know, women always think like once they've gone through menopause and their cycle is done, they don't have the hormonal fluctuations, but we still do. It's just much milder, but we still mm -hmm. stay cyclical. So... Um, I actually work with women almost of all ages, but in my fabulous formula program, it's around about the age of women um, going into perimenopause, menopause um, phase of their life. 
Cool. So um, how did you start, what got your interest in this particular area? How did you, was there something that happened in your life that kind of sparked this interest in you? Is it somebody that in your life that kind of sparked like wanting to know more about this area or how did, how did it happen for you? Well, going into hormonal health, I actually started with IIN and I I did my um, certification in health coaching in general. And when I was done there, um, I just became a, a general health coach. But because gut health was such a big issue for me, I struggled with gut health since I was a little girl. Um, at the age of 21, I woke up one morning, I could barely see. I, I woke up with a very scarce autoimmune condition called myasthenia gravis, which affected my eyesight, it affected my speaking. So that's why um, I needed to understand like why, why, what is the root cause of this? I was on 20, 30 tablets a day and I just felt like that was not a sustainable way for me to live further on. So I needed to understand what general health meant and I had so much information about gut health and all of that and then I decided that's something I don't have all that knowledge about um, and I know I'm going to go into perimenopause and menopause one day so I thought why not study something really that I need to know because that was for me it was understanding my health and then helping people through first healing my my own conditions. So that's how I then decided to go down the route of, of hormone healing, because I do understand that, that it's such a big, broad topic, and all of us women are going to need help on this aspect. So that's the reason why I chose to go um, yeah. and learn a lot more about that, because I felt like that was a missing piece for me. Yeah, yeah, I know. Um, so you're talking about when you were little, you had gut health issues, but what's happening at that point in your life oh my gosh so many things but um as we know it always comes down to a root cause and it's usually more of a, a childhood um experience so I did get down to the root cause of it and it was just a feeling of not being good enough mm. or never never feeling like I'm good enough and that really affected my gut health uh that I couldn't go to school lots of days. Um, like mm -hmm. I went between constipation and diarrhea, always mm -hmm. at the nurse's office for stomach cramp medications since uh, even six, seven, eight. And it just carried on until I was 21. And then I it manifested as an autoimmune condition. And mm -hmm. then I got a second autoimmune condition, Hashimoto. So I needed to really understand this on a deeper level. And that's that's what I did. I healed myself from that. I managed to lose 25 kilograms through healing my body, healing my gut. Um, and then I just understood like everything is connected. So you can't keep one thing separate from the other thing. Yeah, that's amazing. I know. So I just love how you speak into like how much of an impact our beliefs, self-talk, and I guess understanding of our beliefs of ourselves or the world, how could how that has such a huge influence on our well-being, especially our gut health. So I know people say, you know, our gut is our second brain. Um, mm -hmm. But when it comes to like anxiety and fears, distrust, things like that, um, and how you were feeling growing up, how does how does it actually how does that go from your your heart to your gut? Like, how what's that connection that? Yeah, because, yeah, you... there is that gut, you know, it's that gut brain connection, it's the gut brain axis. So let's say 95% of your serotonin is created in your gut. And I think I, I'm not sure exactly the percentage, but something like 70% of oxytocin and all oh. this. So that's why they say you get that gut feeling, right? It's because um, you know, when you're nervous, you get butterflies in your stomach, or sometimes um you gotta do something and you have like quickly have to run to the loo because you like your stomach is feeling a bit uneasy. And right. I actually learned something that was fascinating, and that's actually how we were created. If you think about a fetus, right, before it uncurls, this the, the 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 brain matter is in the gut and that just before it forms into the full fetus so there's grain there's brain matter in the gut and there's gut matter in the brain so that is why that gut brain connection is so 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 important mm -hmm. and yeah, then again it goes many layers deep as well it's that but then when we struggle um with gut issues we start ending up with something called leaky gut the gut um lining isn't thick enough or it uh, gets damaged so the bacteria and the things that's in the in the digestive system lands up in our bloodstream mm -hmm. and that also then lands up in the brain and that leads to more anxiety more mm -hmm. brain fog um, it even could lead to depression and so many other things so 
it's in, it's just crazy how everything is just so so connected. Right. No, that's amazing. I know because I remember one time when you said that about feeling anxious, and I remember just maybe a couple of years ago we were rushing out. We we're trying to go out for a weekend trip, and I was trying to clean up the house. I think we were preparing for something. I remember exactly what it was, but I was cleaning up the house, wanting to get the schoolwork done with my kids. Um, but we had to do it by a certain time because we had to leave for our trip by like, I don't know, four o'clock in the afternoon. And so then I was getting texts from people I, and I really, um, I had some things posted online for sale on Facebook marketplace. And this lady's like, oh, I'll come pick up this item today. I'm like, oh, perfect. You know, I want to get rid of it. So I was like, at that moment, there was probably like within like a minute, I had like all these things bombarding me that I felt like I needed to get done right now. And so I was like, obviously stressed and overwhelmed, but I was like determined to get like fight or flight. Right. And then it was so interesting because I literally remember as soon as like that, uh, you know, overwhelm came on, I felt a twinge in my gut. And it was like, it, it wasn't like I had to go to the bathroom. It was some, something almost like it was like gas or something or something. I just remember something twinging. And then for like, and I was like, oh no, like, and I kind of realized, I think what I, what's the stress that's going on right now for me is causing something. So then, um, did my best to calm down, try to get my stuff done. And then literally probably for the next day or two, I was having digestive upset, but it was, um, bowel, not stomach. Yeah. And I was like, oh my, like that is, it's just, it was just so clear to me in that moment, like how much of a connection there is. And with people with, you know, suffering from IBS and, you know, Crohn's and other things, how, how much stress can impact our health. I know they say 98% of diseases caused by stress is the root cause or or fear. Yeah. So I don't know anything that you want to add to that. Or is that, is that, that's something, right? I mean, that what happens that is to me is huge. that is hundred percent. And that's how it manifests, right? So mm -hmm. having all the things and, and, and I also just want to say like a childhood and, and you say trauma, but it doesn't even necessarily have to be something really, really big. Mm -hmm. Right. Like, like for instance, mine was actually so almost you want to say insignificant, but it had such a big effect on my life. It was literally a ballet teacher that failed me mm -hmm. at the age of six. And at that age, I just decided I'm not good enough. Mm -hmm. So it, it you, people always want to think of trauma as being something really large and it has to be something big to have an effect, but it isn't necessarily needing to be something that big. Mm -hmm. Um so it's good always to go and think back, like what could, and then just work on work on that. And then for me, working on, I am good enough. I can do, I can do something. I can complete it because I was too scared to complete and do anything and complete it because the failure was too hard. Mm -hmm. And it is actually such an insignificant thing that you wouldn't even think that it would have an effect. So that's just what I wanted to share that it yeah. doesn't need to be huge to actually do have a bigger impact later on. Yeah, no, that's so true. I know. And that's the thing is, and it's, I feel like those, the huge as far as like everybody else's perspective, but it's, it's really about your personal perspective. Yeah. It's like, what's, what's huge to you? Like what, like you said, what, what impacts you personally the most? So just like you said, that belief about um, yourself based on the experience that you had with the ballet instructor. And I know one of the other ladies in our group had shared with us I, something that happened to her when she was a little girl at her preschool and that belief about that situation you know, implanted in her mind and carried on in like the foundations of her heart, as far as like what her capability was, what her place in the world was, how she interacts with people and stuff like that. So yeah, those, those little, little big things <laughs> are what carry for time. And then we don't, in as we get older, it just kind of becomes that we adapt to it because that's just how we live our life. And then we have to go back when, and then when our life gets affected in a negative way, then we really have to kind of go back you know, to kind of uncover and see what happened at that time in life to cause everything else, you know, kind of spiral. So anyway, I love this kind of stuff. It's fascinating. I love learning like the why ever since I was little, I was always curious, like, okay, mommy, why is the sky blue? And she was like, oh, I don't know. It's just, just blue in the day. And I'm like, no, like really, why is the sky blue? <laughs> but I think they just didn't understand that. I really wanted to know why <laughs> what's happening scientifically. But yeah, it's fascinating. <laughs> I think also that's the thing is when you have the why, then it's almost easier than to when it comes up, then you can quickly deal with it. Where if, if it's not brought in the light or you don't really know the why, then 
it will just spiral every time. But then if you know the why, you can immediately like, okay, I know what this is. I can I can deal with it face on. So I think that's why it's good to go and really understand the why then. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, that just that route just to yeah, uncover things. Um, okay, so kind of we're going to shift gears a little bit. So <laughs> gut health, which is, it's like you said, our bodies are interconnected. It's not one or the other. It's everything works together. So, um, I want to talk to you about, uh, common hormone, common hormone issues related to aging, but I feel like, I mean, just, you can answer this real quick, but is gut health and hormone health connected in some way? If one's off, one's off or something, I'm not sure. It definitely isn't. I mean, that thing is, that is so many different nuances to that i mean it can because of leaky gut could be because of SIBO it could be because your liver is not detoxifying well um but the gut is a huge huge part of hormone health 100 okay. so okay. working on gut health and it's very intricate as we were saying like that connection the gut brain connection that gut brain axis mm-hmm. um also running through the vagus nerve which connects the brain to the gut that's what tells the gut and the brain that's how they communicate with oh. with each other okay. so um yeah working on gut health is one of the very key things that you need to do when you want to balance your hormones so 100 oh. percent. okay yeah so for example if somebody is more stressed or anxious or has a lot going on we call it if there's a book called rushing the rushing woman syndrome we talk about in our group mm-hmm. where those that's typically you know it describes it right so women who are busy anxious always on the run always on the go and then end up um, in early menopause because of it with cortisol raising and fight or flight and all that stuff. Um, and that's, and that is obviously emotional too. Like what's keeping, what's driving you to keep you driven, you know, like what's, and and then how does that, you know, I'm just kind of thinking out loud and then how does that stress affect your gut and then, and then affecting your gut, then affecting your hormones where women are going into menopause in their early forties. Um, yeah, definitely directly has an effect on the hormones as well. So I can explain the physiology behind that as well. Like why yeah. that would you say the busyness and the, the being stressed as that is a, uh, on itself, even um, not talking about the gut has a huge effect on the hormones, because if you understand like the tiers of the hormones, so we have something called parent hormones that's our dhea and our pregnenolone those are okay. the parent hormones so from them your sex hormones are made progesterone estrogen testosterone insulin oh not insulin a melatonin but from those two parent hormones they also metabolize cortisol so okay. cortisol is our we need it for survival right the body is always gonna um prioritize cortisol over making babies, over progesterone and estrogen. Okay. okay. When you're in fight or flight and you have it elevated, and if you're not managing your stress well as well, and you sit with that permanent high cortisol, mm. it's almost like a lock and key. So this would be, say, pregnenolone. Pregnenolone takes in progesterone, and we need the progesterone because that's our keep calm and carry on hormone. Okay. So cortisol also fits in that lock and key. So then we sit with the proge- the cortisol being metabolized and then our progesterone is not being metabolized then we don't have enough progesterone and progesterone and estrogen are balanced always it's not how much you have it's progesterone versus estrogen those two are always in a balance so the problem is when your progesterone drops your estrogen is going to go up and then you sit with estrogen dominance and that comes with all the hormonal issues and the unbalanced periods and the heavy periods and the menstrual migraines and um foggy brain and moodiness and depression and all of the things um so it's good to understand and then dhea is our other parent hormone and that one also competes with cortisol because i think our body knows right fight or flight is really important we need to get away from that tiger that's our body's like first and it doesn't know the difference between being busy and stressed or actually being chased by a tiger so that's why you sit then with unbalanced hormones if you don't manage your cortisol really really well so that is a key factor in hormone balance yeah that makes a lot of sense so so say that again so you said um okay so when when stress is high and cortisol is high then what happens with so progesterone goes down is that what you said yeah, because the body is using that parent hormone to 
take in the cortisol to metabolize the cortisol because that needs to be metabolized. We need the cortisol for survival. Okay. So now the progesterone is not being metabolized. So no, now we don't have enough progesterone. Okay. And progesterone balances against estrogen. So Got that pushes up out. So then that that whole balance is off. Got it. So then es- but estrogen remains the same. High. Got high. It. So that's okay. So it's the high estrogen low progesterone, which is causing the symptoms you were describing. Yeah, if you think about a seesaw. So if the progesterone uh, is going to be less than the other one, it's going to be more. Okay. So it's not, estrogen doesn't necessarily rise. It's always just the balance against the progesterone. Oh, so they kind of like tug, tug, yeah, like kind yeah, of tug each other. They're always uh, on a seesaw. Oh, okay. That's amazing. So yes, I know in our group too, we talk um, a lot about um, stress and, and how to manage cortisol, especially yeah. for, um, for body fat loss. And so, and also for, and then also liver detoxification to make for anything before we go into, um, a fasting tip for ketone production and all that stuff, our livers have to be clear. And then, mm. um, so I'm trying to think of it and then balancing hormones. That's a, so that's another, that's what we're talking about this. Cause I wanted to know more about how that all, like you said, our yeah. bodies are all, it's all a, Dance really. <laughs> jump in there with the liver, which is also connected to the hormone health, right? So I don't know if you also cover that, but your your liver is also um it gets rid of the excess estrogen. So when the liver is really taxed with other things, other toxins and things, the body doesn't um see the estrogen as being as important to um detoxify and then you obviously it gets moved through the car and then you actually poop out your extra estrogen when you sit with with elevated estrogen so when your liver is too busy with other toxins could be alcohol could be um just um the kind of foods we eat maybe the perfumes we use the shampoos we use whatever all the all the toxins that our bodies are always having to deal with Mm -hmm. the body just okay estrogen you just go for another circulation i'm just a little bit busy here let me just do these important things and then we sit with estrogen dominance as well so clearing the liver is very important for when we go into perimenopause and menopause for actually balancing our estrogen levels as well that's so neat yeah i've I've heard before um is the excess estrogen stored in body fat also do you know I it probably could. I mean, the body does, yeah. but mm-hmm. and, it could, and that's actually why they say alcohol is linked to breast cancer, to because the liver is taxed with metabolizing the alcohol, then the estrogen. So the body said es, um, elevated estrogen leads to certain cancers like ovarian cancer, breast cancer, things like that. Mm-hmm. So it does. Then you know, it would go and sit, and then it forms a cancer cell yes. for some people. I mean, right? Because yeah. it's not supposed to be there. It's not supposed to be there. We shouldn't be having that. That's why when people have a breast cancer and they go on the tablets to completely bring down the estrogen, because if it's an estrogen related cancer, the doctors want you to have zero estrogen for the chance of it actually coming back. Wow. So elevated estrogen is directly linked to certain certain cancers. Wow, that's fascinating. So kind of at the root of it all. So liver health is really important for important. so many different functions right and i guess I, I guess really gut health and all the other things the uh kidney health all those things everything to clear things out and to move things around and make sure and, and just digestive health all everything so needs to be by. yeah right that's why it's so important <laughs> i know a few uh, about a month or two ago we had heather heather on and yeah. um she was telling us about you know spring cleaning she calls it and basically once a year she and her family they do a physical spring cleaning and do the enemas and um, liver detoxing, castor oil packs. And I was like, that's so cool. Just to kind of, she's just once a year, just, you know, or more if you need it, but just to have that regular cycle. So that way you can keep your body moving and flowing smoothly. So that's a good reminder. That's yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. So we've talked about a lot of cool stuff. All right. So we have, okay. So, um, when, when women are aging, so yeah. what, are, what are the common hormone things that are going on? So I know there's different seasons and different stages, but what are, what's like the major things that are happening as far as aging goes with 
hormones. If we're just going to stick maybe with this, with the sex hormones, right, with the estrogen, because yeah. a lot of women could have, like thyroid could be an issue, but but we're not going to go into that today, I think. Yeah. But for me, what I find often, and then um, also what I learned through my studies was, it's estrogen. So it's either estrogen dominance okay. um, that goes with low progesterone, as I explained before. So if you your progesterone kind of is your keep calm and carry on hormones. So they always say you know your progesterone is too low mm -hmm. when your husband leaves his clothes on the floor usually and you're like oh, and you pick it up and you put it in the basket but when your husband leaves his clothes on the floor and you're actually kind of planning how you're going to murder him like when you get like that anger it's you know it's not normal for you to act like that but that is what progesterone does progesterone okay. keeps us calm they say it shall keep calm and carry on hormone. Yeah. So if you feel like something that usually wouldn't really irritate you, or if you wake up at two o'clock in the morning, at two o'clock in the morning every mm -hmm. night, that's usually also one of the signs. And that's unfortunately that's that what happens when we go into um perimenopause and menopause. But obviously we can we can definitely manage that a lot better. We don't have to go to the extremes of it. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's great. That's how when hormone balance, when we actually work on our hormones and our hormone balance, we don't have to suffer um the way that it's stigmatized when you Yeah, no, it's, it's good that you mentioned that about waking up at, at night because I had a client mentioning that or a few even before. Um oh man, I keep waking up at four o'clock in the morning, you know, and I'm wide awake. And cortisol seems like it's running and I'm like, okay, well then for our group, I say, okay, well, cortisol's running, use it. You know, it, it's designed to make your body move, move, you know, so either we, I recommend we do like 50 body weight squats or some pushups or get your workout in or, you know, have our breathing. If you can't like move in the moment, you know, just different things, you know, the tight uh, flexing and relaxing your muscles kind of thing, or just, you know, squeezing your hands and just kind of releasing it a little bit. Um, but so that that's the thing then, right? So waking up kind of early in the morning in the middle of the night, that's estrogen dominance. Is that what you said? Yeah, the, yeah well, that, that's when our progesterone is too low. But our progesterone is, is low. Estrogen is high. So cortisol also plays off on, melat on melatonin. So if you also struggle with, with the sleeping when you get into your perimenopause, it's also really important to then balance your melatonin so make sure that you don't watch look at your phone just before bed don't get the blue light exposure make sure that you see the sun first thing in the morning because okay. that's going to set circadian rhythm okay. and that's a really good way of more of a long-term fix so it's brilliant to use that cortisol but we also want to get into a stage where we don't make up again at like between two and four either as well right so because the same seesaw as I was explaining with estrogen and progesterone, melatonin and cortisol also have this dance. So hmm. cortisol has to go up and melatonin has to go down for you to wake up. And then okay. at night, melatonin has to go up and cortisol has to drop for you to fall asleep. Uh, okay, so melatonin so sleepy and cortisol wakes you up. So if you look after your melatonin, you teach your body, it's daytime now, look at the sun, get some sun exposure. It definitely sets you up for a better night's sleep and that cortisol regulation over time it's not a we're not going to look at the sun tonight this morning and sleep tonight it's a it's a bit of a process yeah um it takes a month or so of of getting that morning sun exposure but that is amazing for hormone health yeah like awesome. all the free things all the easy things it's actually things that shift the needle the most <laughs> right no yeah that's good i know because in the summer and in our group in the ageless body blueprint group we were really encouraged. I was encouraging everybody to get sunlight before UV light or before uh, lights from the blue light. You know, yeah. Blue light. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> before blue light. And so oh, light. we were doing that, but now, now for here, me, I'm for me here in North Idaho, it's winter. So we don't really have that. Some, well, actually it's been nice. We have sunlight. So I just need to, but it comes out later. So a lot later than I wake up in the morning. <laughs> so I have to, I don't know how, maybe I can get my, I have a little, like a indoor sun lamp for when it's like really cloudy here <clears throat> and I'll put it up in my office and I put it on. That's a good idea. So maybe I should just do something like that now. Cause I do, I like this morning I woke up really early and I was like, why am I up right now? And I felt cortisol up and I was like, okay, I'm going to get up and move and do some, you know, push-ups. and I didn't and meditation and prayer and I felt better. Um, but then I was actually like, Oh, rearing to go. My, my brain was clear. So, but I'm like, why am I up? But I'm what you said about the sunlight make and and um, cortisol makes a really big difference. You guys are in winter now, and it's a little bit, mm -hmm. yeah. The days are different, right? Right, they're shorter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's good. I know uh, a lot of times too. I've been hearing more about also eating eating with the sun. So when I like that, 
open your eating window, we call it, you know, for fasting and, and feasting. So open your eating window when the sun is out and when it goes down, then close your eating window. And that's like a natural way to fast. So eating according Doesn't to the cycle. Doesn't it almost go like with caveman times, are we supposed to be living, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> didn't go hunt a forage when it was dark, so you went to bed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, you know, it's interesting too, because even with fasting, for example, <clears throat> if, if you do an extended fast longer than you yeah. are used to and you're overnight <clears throat> and you, some people can't sleep. And it's not that they're hungry, it's that their their cortisol energy's up because it's designed to do that. So um, you can go out and hunt at night because for whatever reason, there wasn't food available during the day. And so people, I, I've done that happen to me too before. I've done like a longer fast, like a three-day fast. And I'm like, why am I wide awake at, and I can't fall asleep? And people will say that's because it's like an adaptation for survival where you need to be up at night to go hunt. <laughs> Wow. And it's amazing. I actually just want to share this with you because I yeah. found this absolutely fascinating and it, it ties in nicely with the caveman and, and with hormones. Yeah. So, you know, there's a couple of women or one or two women living in the same household, their cycles sync mm -hmm. eventually, like they have their period at the same time. And it obviously has to do with the pheromones and hormones like that be, that's secreted th throughout the skin. But the reason for that in caveman times is uh, was the men all went away for hunting. Sometimes they went away for weeks at a time. And when they all came back, it kind of, they kind of all needed the women at the same time to be fertile. Okay. Because they needed to impregnate them and then go again for the hunt. Okay. So that was more survival thing uh -huh. was to, because all the men usually went away and they came back and they spent a few nights and then so I thought that that makes a lot that's of sense really that's really cool I love it Bible. and then and then that said it's just for community like women like to do things together and we they like to have babies at the same time yeah it's so cool how, the, how God designed our bodies it's just yeah yeah it's, it's just we, we lost track of being in tune with nature or even like you know having your cycle according to the moon cycle you know or tracking yeah. your cycle according to the moon I might last time I had it, my first day of my period, I looked at the moon to see where it was just to get an idea of what my body's doing with it. And, but I'm not outside enough right now because of the weather to really be like in, in line, you have to be like more in the sun and in the moonlight, like in the summer, if I'm out walking at night, um, to really get in sync with what nature's doing. But, um, yeah, it, it's, yeah, that's so cool. And I've even, I've even what you described about um, women's and, and their cycles syncing up together. Um, I've heard too, that with, you know, how your cycle traditionally is supposed to sync up with the moon cycle. And when there's a full moon, then you go out and hunt. And that's when you're like your estrogen, your first 10 days of your cycle, estrogen's high and you're feeling a good energy. You can go, you know, conquer the world. <laughs> and then, um, when the moon is not, when the moon, it's like a new moon. So when the moon's oh, not out and it's dark, then everybody stays inside because it's not safe to hunt or it's, you can't see. And then that's when you're ovulating and then everybody stays I inside. I think that would be the other way around for me because if I look at how how I uh -huh. teach cycle health, it's exactly like that. When you menstruate, uh -huh. you hibernate, you stay indoors, you cuddle, you have a blanket. When yeah. you ovulate, you go out, you can talk, you can ask for a raise because your estrogen is high, your progesterone is high, you've got a okay. little bit of a peak testosterone that gives you like that get up and go that uh -huh. kind of a little bit of an extra like male hormone you know yeah. men can usually more assertive so you're a little bit more assertive uh -huh. and speak you can speak your truth because you are more um verbally fluent okay so that's if you want to do a talk or if you want to ask for a raise you do that when you ovulate because that's mm -hmm. when you're strong all your hormones are like at their uh -huh. at their peak but when you menstruate, you kind of want to go in the cave and you want to that hot chocolate and like you want to just like, just be with yourself. Yeah, and then another up. fascinating thing is when you menstruate, actually, apparently your left and right brain connects 25% more. So it's, they say that you're more intuitive or in tuned. So if you want to go in and think about something really deep and you want to go and explore mm. something that's happening for you that's a really good time because mm. you're very intuitive you can trust your intuition more when you mm. have your period when you menstruate <laughs> that's so neat I love it I know it's so cool and it, that's just we call that the the uh, not, uh the nurture phase like yes. the nurture phase it's just kind of you nurture yeah I can just see how you can just be really because if you're still then you have a moment to really think about deeper things and and then that connections plus that connections there like, yeah. um, in your brain 
this, this stuff is fascinating. Thank you for sharing this. <laughs> okay. okay. So let's see. Um, okay. So how about for, let's kind of move gears to yeah. accelerated aging. Okay. So common causes for accelerated aging and what can be done to prevent it? Oh yes. So that's what we're really focusing on in, in this group specifically is kind of slowing down the aging process. Um, and what are some of the things that we should avoid to slow down the process and move into healthier aging? I think just in general, living a healthier life and making sure that, and I think that's what you do a lot in your program is balancing blood sugar, because when we have that sugar spikes, it's extremely oxidative to the body and anything mm -hmm. that's oxidative is very aging. It's like rust. When you have oxidative stress, it's almost like a, a metal being rust or getting rusty. So it's kind of as a metaphor being the body getting rusty. So we want to keep our blood sugar really as stable as possible for, um, longevity and better health looking at keeping our livers as how or supported as possible because I mean, we're getting a lot of bombardment of toxins and things that we don't really have um too much of a say over it, it it's in our air and it's in our mattresses or whatever but what we can do as you were saying we can do the the cost the oil packs we can drink the lemon juice in the morning we can do the things to support the liver um more on that we can work on balancing our hormones which um would be if you eat a well-balanced diet make sure that you eat all the colors of the rainbow you get all your different nutrients in all your different colors every color has a different phytonutrient make sure that you have enough enough healthy fats healthy fats is key for for graceful aging as i'd say so and that's not i'm, I'm talking about the good you know i think your group probably knows all the good fats like your avocados and your seed and your um seeds and nuts not seed oils that's very inflammatory avocado oil um olive oil just all our salmon or all mm -hmm. healthy fats really because hormones are fat soluble as well so we want to be having enough good fats for our hormones actually to be metabolized if we don't have enough fats our hormones cannot move through the body so okay. Fats what about what about protein? How important is protein, protein at this stage in life? Oh, hundred. So, so I'm actually glad you brought this up because I have this. I actually made this list here. So, focusing on the macro. So, if you look at your protein, us as women and the studies are being thrown out now more than ever that we need to have. I don't know if you how you work on kilograms, but you need about. Between two grams per kilogram. So I, I, you need about 30 grams of protein per meal okay. just um, for your muscle health, for your support of your supporting of your hormone health. So protein is absolutely key for us um, at this stage. And I think a lot of people say we're putting too much emphasis on protein, but I think we're not. Because I think if you're going to be, and I'm not a numbers girl, I really don't want people to be counting and be measuring and weighing. But sometimes it is a good thing just to bring in a little bit of awareness around something because you think you might be having enough protein. But if you go and calculate it, just do it for five days and okay. see how many do you have per meal okay. to see. So I did it the other day and I was not even getting to 25 in the whole day. Mm -hmm. And I was like, gosh, okay. I know I'm not, I don't preach numbers, but sometimes it's just good to go yeah. and have an idea much you're having and then obviously the other macro that we really need is fiber okay. fiber feed gut good micro our uh, good bacteria in our gut it helps our food to be moved through faster so we don't sit with constipation which is mm. really it's toxic for the body for us not to go to the toilet at least once or twice a day okay. so fiber is crucial um having obviously i said the fats and then our complex carbs we do need a little bit of carbs i am um, I don't say eat um, rice and potatoes and all of that, although in moderation for some women, it's okay. Yeah. Um, but make sure that you have your sweet potatoes, make sure that you have carrots. Carrots is amazing for hormone health. Raw okay. carrots actually help to clear out extra, extra estrogen. So oh. if we can be having raw carrots, especially in our second half of our cycle, it's brilliant because we want to clear the estrogen towards the second half so that's cool having that's good carrots that's a good i tip. wonder if the orange because you mentioned sweet potatoes too i wonder what the orange anyway i just so think about as a dietitian <laughs> yeah maybe the keratins but yeah. something is particular in the actual fiber of the carrot okay that helps to bind with estrogen so huh. um 
I so, yeah, so carrot, so like juicing carrot and celery probably wouldn't work because it's the fiber that you need. Yeah, it's good okay. to just have the carrot just sticks to get the fiber to get that through. Keep it simple. Okay. Keep it simple. And okay. then obviously you have your variety. And now uh, that's what I teach my girls is having 30 different fruits, fruits, vegetables, which would also include nuts and seeds, spices and herbs. Okay. Having 30 different of uh, and in one week so get yourself a notes on your phone and list it and you'll see how you start shopping a little bit differently you're like oh okay I'm, I'm on 20 now I need like 10 more okay. kind of get you excited about eating different foods because obviously our hormones also need the micronutrients all the vitamins and the minerals so to keep it easy is just to keep your variety and that also feeds the gut microbes mm -hmm. They all have different diets as well. So we want to feed all the good bacteria, whatever is they it, like. Is it like a prebiotic? Is that we would describe it as kind of like a prebiotic type food? Yes. Like the veggies yes. and things, the fresh foods. Yes. Okay. hundred okay. percent. Because okay. they feed the bacteria in the gut. And then it also will supply you with all the meat. And it keeps it simple. keeps it easy. And not to overthink too much. Yeah. It actually kind of ties into, I'm thinking, but mother women ask, okay, well, if we're fasting, how do I get that much in my diet with a shorter eating window? So I think that that kind of plays into, um, so we talk about too with, so with fasting, it's a lifestyle, a way of eating. So, but we also, um, fluctuate the amount of fasting time. So it's not always that you're fasting all the time and only eating one meal a day or something. It's, mm -hmm. you maybe fast breakfast one day and then eat your other two meals or, you know, for a few days in a row, and then you do a longer fast and then take a day off and just eat feast, like have a healthy feast, but varying it is what's important. So that way you can get the benefit of both of the nutrients. Cause I always tell them nutrition is just as important as fasting. Um, but fasting is a newer concept technique. So people have to focus on a little bit more, but we can't lose focus of the importance of healthy nutrition or healthy feasting also. So, um, I'm glad you brought that up because that's, it's a, a balance, you know, of the two and giving your, your gut and digestive system a break because we weren't designed to eat constantly all the time because our poor insulin, you know, gets stressed out in our pancreas and everything. <laughs> cause like, you know, we're talking about, you know, the caveman days, they weren't, they didn't get up in the morning and go make coffee or go get something to eat from the fridge. Cause they couldn't, they had to go out and forage for whatever they could find and then eat that. And then, and it may take longer to forage you know, they might not eat something in the morning because it might not be available. So it's just kind of tapping back into that, um, that part of our metabolism and how we were designed. Um, but then also balancing it with quality nutrition. So anyway, I'm yeah, that's such that. a big key thing because I, I, I actually do know of a lot of girls that are into the fasting, but then they don't tie it in with a, what, what, what did you say? The oh, healthy the feasting, the healthy feasting, because then they get the concept it's like everything and you need all the pillars, right? You can't just do the fasting and then go and have a pizza and then have beer and whatever you're going to be having. Yeah, and once in a while, then, right? That's okay. I would say 20%. No, but I mean like yeah. that because a lot of women go into fasting thinking I'm not, okay. I'm doing restrictive eating. So in my window, I can eat whatever I want. So they eat whatever they want in that window. And I think that is that, I think that gets to dangerous territory because mm -hmm. you may be losing the weight, but you're not feeling your body, your gut, your hormones. Yes. And it might be okay for a while until it's not. And I think then it's really difficult to kind yeah. of get yourself back into health. Yeah. So, and the thing is too, if fasting, eating kind of carby, well, eating all carby foods makes it really hard to fast because it makes you more hungry. So when you're eating, like we talked, you mentioned about healthy fats and lots of protein and, um, you know, some healthy carbs and stuff, it makes it easier to fast because you're more satisfied and your, your hunger hormones levels are lower because you're more satisfied. And you're getting Excellent. quality nutrition. So it's easier to fast because you have a lot of healthy things on board to tap into. Um, yeah, and isn't it also right? Because the body is used to using fat as energy, yeah. and not, a, not your quick carbs. So then when you're not eating, the body is able to then utilize its own stores much easier than when you are on a high carb diet, then the body cannot switch over to burning fat for 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 energy because it's it, it's not adapted to do that it takes a couple of days mm -hmm. exactly yeah because you have to clear out your your stores your excuse me yeah your um liver stores <clears throat> yeah. to in order to once that's cleared out then you can tap into body fat but um <clears throat> some people who fast struggle with losing body fat even though they're fasting and what they real what i realized over time is that because they they haven't cleared out the carbohydrate stores from their liver yet 
So that's why we have to, well, not have to, it's suggested to eat keto or more of like a really strict keto just for a couple of days. Yeah, to allow your, yeah. yeah. To clear it out, to let your body use what it's got and then, you know, do its thing. Just over. Yeah. That's, it's fascinating. Yeah. Isn't it quite, no, I just think our bodies are so amazing. <laughs> okay. All right. So, um, okay, supplements products. Oh, I said, you mentioned here, I said something about sleep. So as far as sleep timing, is there a certain amount of hours we should get time? We should go to sleep. Um, I, I just recommend people to go. You have have to have to try and be asleep by 10 o'clock okay because that's the restorative processes work so we okay. ideally need to get between seven and a half and eight hours okay. women do need more sleep than men it's been proven so mm -hmm. um we do need i say try and get eight hours um of sleep and okay. then count backwards whenever you have to get up count backwards and i know we're, i'm also like a four or five wake up kind of person so i work <laughs> that time is my best time to work i'm very very clear and very like, yeah. fresh i'm a morning person so i need to kind of be in bed by like 8 39 okay. and okay. then also try and eliminate your blue your blue light and if mm -hmm. you have to work or you have to be on your computer we can order those blue light blocking glasses on amazon they're all oh. available so just wear okay. the blue the blue blocker um, glasses if you have to be on your computer or on your phone or do something uh -huh. just to make sure that you can still set your circadian rhythm up for a for a bit of sleep. Yeah, I wonder so, if that's why my cortisol has been higher too, because not enough sun, but too much blue light. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Oh, 100%. <laughs> Yay! Let's <laughs> no, answer the that... prayer. Because the past few days, I'm like, why? And I kept like, why is my heartbeat up? <laughs> like, I'm not really I anxious. Think... Blue light is a big thing. So ah, people, okay. it's always things that we don't really think of something. And then when I was in South Africa now for two weeks, we don't even have a TV there. So mm -hmm. it was amazing. It was just nature and it was uh, with friends and family. And it's weird how you reset. And yeah, it's, I just felt a complete change in how I slept, how I, how awake I felt all day. I didn't have yeah. like this fogginess. And I, I'm now, now I'm actually thinking about it. Are you, you, you made me think of it now that it's just not being in front of a screen for two weeks. So huge. Yay. I even even yeah. And like, I can't just keep, you know, doing squats to get my heart rate down from a cortisol because I'm going to get so hard tired. I'm like, wait, what's actually going on? What's causing this? But yeah, there well, we go. I, I just need to get my little sunlight, my fake sunlight in the morning. Maybe I'll sit, sit in front of that for like a half, a little while while I'm doing my Bible time and then put my blue light glasses on. At and night, get like my work. Two hours oh. before bedtime. Okay. Just two hours before bedtime. You don't have to do it all day, but the two to three hours before you ideally want to fall asleep. Okay. So if you want to be asleep by 10, I would say start by 6 30 ish. Okay. Um, bring them on if you can put it away. But a lot of mm -hmm. us do watch a bit of TV at night, but then just put on your your blue oh. blocking glasses. Your magical That's glasses. Yes. <laughs> to block you out get the... ones. you get very cute ones so. <laughs> yeah i know yeah i found some a few years ago they they're amazing yeah okay thank Just you i have to pull them out of my really, back again yeah that's a really really good um tip for for women so i think yeah and okay. it's simple awesome yeah okay so um i was asking you about daily rituals so that was one of them so um what daily rituals and behaviors should we do to keep our hormones in check what are some healthy things yeah, so I had to. I wanted to bring it down to very few because I had I sat mm -hmm. and thought about it a little bit. So I think number one for us women is watching our alcohol intake. I think that's going to be almost the biggest needle shifter because it has effect on so many things. It affects your sleep quality. So you don't go into your REM sleep. You don't go into enough deep sleep. It mm -hmm. affects how the liver detoxifies. So I would say just be really mindful of alcohol intake okay and then increasing your fiber fiber is also going to cover a few things it's going to be a prebiotic so it's going to be feeding the good bacteria it's going to um especially flax i love imp um, including flax seeds because that helps um with estrogen it's got um, omega-3s it um helps for the bowel for your bowels to move properly okay. and then um i would just say enough good fats that's what i make okay. sure that you because I I notice when I've morphed good fats, my hair starts like getting new little hairs, and I like my hair is healthy, and okay. I can literally notice like on my skin quality mm -hmm. how I've been eating. So yeah. for yeah. us women that want to age gracefully, and we want to look good mm -hmm. and look, and yeah, you know, just we we don't 
I am not an advocate for, and, and I don't judge anybody who does that, but I don't want to inject. I don't want to pull my skin. Mm-hmm. I, I, I want to do everything I can to mm-hmm. age as beautifully and gracefully as yeah, I can and yeah. want to age because aging is an honor. So, yeah, right. Um, yeah. 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 Uh-huh. And, and we, yeah, we're big thing. into cast big into castor oil. That's sort of my thing that oh, I'm yes. sharing a lot about. All oh, for skin hair, skincare specifically. Oh, um, I'm castor yeah. oil freak. Yeah, I know. So can everybody Yay. castor oil? You belong to our tribe. <laughs> yeah, that's for eyelashes, eyebrows, for skin. Oh, yeah, I was just gonna say, yeah. Get the pimple. The I'm like, come here, castor oil on the pimple. I know everything. Yeah, hair detoxing gut like all the things it's just yeah I put on my belly button before I go to sleep at night I was just gonna say put it you put it in your belly button I do <laughs> I just started doing that like about a week ago <laughs> finding all I've the actually re- just uh-huh. let my dad try it for for cataracts because I've heard that it can oh. actually if you put it in your eye at night before you go to sleep huh. it actually helps with cataracts so wow. get your feedback one season done it a couple of nights and <laughs> magical see how Yay, so, yeah, I love, it. I love my cluster <laughs> well. Uh, and funny. then managing your stress well. That is okay. as I was explaining with the with your um progesterone, you have we have to they say if you could bottle and sell mm-hmm. meditation, you could sell it for thousands because mm-hmm. the benefits of that would it's it's just so amazing. But because it's free and because it's easy, mm-hmm. people don't always value it. So managing your stress is probably the most one of the most important things for um and then sleeping before 10 a.m so that's my daily rituals that i would say okay would be big needle shifter so it's awesome i would say it's the stuff that's free it's the stuff that's easy they say right. it's the things that's easy to do as not to do those are the things that move the needle <laughs> yeah yeah i know i know it seems so simple and so logical but it's just a matter of implementing it um yeah. okay so any supplements or products that you recommend that we take for balancing hormones or what do you like? Yeah. So, um, as I said, like the first one flax is amazing. If you can grind that, have it before lunch and dinner, if you're only having your two meals, taking a tablespoon of flaxseed, grinding it up and adding it with a little bit of water and just drinking um, that before yeah. you have your lunch, before okay. you have your dinner. It's really, really an amazing. And I say, I always try and say food first. I go for the food first approach. So then after that, fermented foods. I love adding fermented foods, kimchi, having sauerkraut, pickles, because that also Mm. really, really helps to populate the gut. And it's got the, um, what is the cruciferous vegetables help that help to support the liver? I forgot the name. (laughs) Oh, broccoli? Cabbage? Oh, broccoli, cauliflower, and cabbage. Those um, cruciferous vegetables are really, really good for helping the liver to detoxify. Okay. And then when we get to to actual supplements, so I think milk thistle is always a good add because that obviously supports our liver really well. So the more we support our liver, um, that helps a lot. And then when we get to things for hormone health, I really like um, it's called chasteberry or vit it's or vitex. That's really, really good for women that enter into perimenopause where they start feeling like edgy and anxious mm. and night sweats and mm. want to, you want to kill your husband kind of that, <laughs> that <laughs> part of it. Okay. It's um, that's very, yeah. very effective for that. And okay. then I always say for some women that works mm-hmm. and then for some women you get black collage. So okay. also a natural supplement. So first try the Vitex for some women that work. And okay. then if that works, just stick with it. Okay. Um, at, usually on the bottle, it would explain to you how to use it. Some say just take 40 drops in the morning okay. and then every morning, just have that just before food. And, and I'll, or, and I'll, as you continue sharing, I'll, I'm going to post a list of these for everybody with the video. So you can see what they are. So if you want to find them, I will share that with you. And then okay. I like the maca powder. Maca powder is really good also for just balancing oh. the hormones, supporting DHEA, which is your parent or your building block hormone so if we're going to be supporting that with maca maca powder is easy to add in a smoothie i just say start with a little bit don't um sometimes they would recommend start with a teaspoon but i find that it's it's way too much i almost want to say microdose take the tip of a teaspoon start with that okay Um, and then work your way up don't start with like the recommended dose of a teaspoon i think it's it's just too much to start what, off what with. happens if you have that much is there a side well, effect well for me personally every time i do that i start spotting 
Oh, so interesting. It's really like it powerful. It has such a powerful effect on the hormones that I feel like it's almost too much. Wow. Like it's not normal to spot on day huh. 17. Huh. Interesting. And so it definitely yeah. has a quite a big effect on the hormones. So, but when I microdose, um, so I'm just, I prefer for my clients to microdose until they get to a teaspoon if they can handle that. Okay. Some kind. Okay. So. And it's a natural, it's a, it's a, it's a bulb fruit, um, vegetable that, um, so it's completely natural. Okay. And then another thing that I really like people to supplement with is magnesium okay. because we're supposed to, I think you know that as well, like we're supposed to get it from our food, but because our ground is so depleted, mm. um, and it's not in the food as it should. So supplementing with magnesium, magnesium supports so many different functions in the body and it helps and um, balancing, balance the hormones really well. So I, I always like to, if you're going to be spending money on a supplement, I think magnesium is very, very important because it helps with sleep. It helps with so many different things. I can, I can send that to you if you want to put that as well. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. We were big. Um, I'm a big proponent of magnesium glycinate okay. specifically. Yeah. But yeah, that's oh, it's, I, it's like second to water for me. That salt well, and water and magnesium. Want sleep, yeah. So yeah, that'd be awesome. Okay. So, okay. As we wrap it up. So I have one more question for you. Um, I don't know if I actually, we'd have talked about this specifically, but um, what about just like uh, weight management and hormones? What do we need to, it, what, what's the, what's the hormone that makes it, it I mean, is it true? Do, do, do specific hormones make it easier to put on body fat? I don't know if progesterone or estrogen or what, what causes women to gain weight as they get older. Do you have any insight on that? I, I just kind of throwing this question out there, but um uh, is that a thing I'm just thinking like if if yeah. you just look at how women age and what happens mm -hmm. um and I listened to a TED talk the other day and he was uh -huh. saying it's actually natural for women as they get older to gain a little bit of weight I'm not saying we should put on 10 or 20 kilograms but yeah. that is kind of how nature has intended it so I for me I just understand it as obviously your hormones starts dropping right because your estrogen oh, your estrogen goes down when you start going into menopause all your so you have your your peaks and your drops as normal when you when you cyclical when you menstruate but once you go into menopause you still have those those curves but they're very mild mm. so we don't have that a lot of progesterone in the beginning and the estrogen at the end of that our cycle, but it's much milder. So I just thinking our bodies likes balance, right? So if we can just keep everything in balance, if we balance our blood sugar, mm. we eat the right foods to support our, our hormones, we manage our stress, we support our liver. Mm -hmm. Um that all because as I, you were saying about the layers of the onion, right? Weight loss for some women is like the second layer. For some women it's the seventh layer mm, but mm -hmm. the other layers it's healing the gut um balancing the blood sugar managing your stress and your cortisol so all of those layers are really important so you don't know where your fat loss layer is lying because we all by individuals we're all different so weight loss will happen when you look after your body holistically if you look after all these things that we've discussed um and you do the things that you need to do so mm -hmm. i think just being balanced and and that doesn't mean being perfect all the time that means living some I would say 80 20 rule 20 percent of the time you can have a piece of pizza you can have a glass of wine but mm -hmm. it shouldn't be every night mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um and that's all all again just balancing so yeah that's what okay. I would say yeah um, no I love it that's true it's so true though because it's yeah, like it's about the whole person I think sometimes we get stuck on <clears throat> Uh, body fat, body fat, body fat. I want to lose weight. I want to lose weight, which is, you know, I get, I, I can see it's in our culture and it's, especially as our bodies change, it's like, wait, what's going on? You know, I want to feel my best, but feeling your best isn't just body weight. It's and a lot of people, women that come to me and I have one-on-one -on -one calls with them. I always ask them, you know, what's your number one goal? And majority of the time they say, I just want to feel my best and weight will come with it. And I was like, it's mm -hmm. so funny. Cause that, that is, just from my, you know, population of people that I work with, it, sh it shows that that's actually what women are wanting, not necessarily fat loss, which is what media is promoting. Mm -hmm. Women just want to feel good. They want to be able to take care of their families, be able to have, go on vacation and have a nice time, be able to go on date night with their spouse and still eat whatever they want to enjoy and not feel guilty about it. They just want to have a good quality of life and mm -hmm. body, body weight happens to come along with that. And they kind of say, well, okay, I want to have all those things. 
And then whatever my body weight's at when I'm there is it, it's fine. I just want to feel my best. So I thought, wow, that's, it says a lot about the pop, about how women think compared to what culture says. That's so true, right? And imagine you are really skinny or imagine you're your goal weight, mm -hmm. but you're not healthy or you've done it a, a way maybe that hasn't been supportive of your body. And now you, you struggle with um, diverticulitis or your pancreas mm. is not anymore, whatever the case may be. Was it worth losing 25 kilos or mm -hmm. I, 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 um, I don't know how many pounds? I can't okay. Yeah, it's, yeah. Mm -hmm. But um, I'm thinking then, is it worth it? Because as you said, like, our popular they, why do you want to be why do you want to lose the weight because I want to be able to play with my grandchildren I want to be able to go on holiday I want to be able to tour the world once I retire or whatever your why is mm -hmm. the weight loss is literally just the cherry on top and I find with all my clients as well when we stop focusing on weight loss and we focus on the <laughs> health the weight happens with every yes. single person, every single person. It's, it's a natural side effect it's like it can't, yeah. that's just what happens because your body's running well it's doing what and it's I think supposed it's to be doing. You stop stressing about the weight yes, and talking about the scale, and then it's like, okay, then the body is like becoming, and it feels like it's loved, right? I also believe mm. that the body really knows when it's loved or not. Oh, so yeah. you look in the mirror and you love yourself for all your weight that you're carrying or not. That's yes. when everything changes. Yes. Oh, completely. And when you just lean into acceptance and and caring for your body in all aspects. Then because it's just, you love yourself, not because you want to be skinny. Right. Yeah. And usually if women are carrying extra weight, there's a lot of stress involved in their life in general. I'm just making a blanket mm -hmm. statement, but it's kind of true. You know, it's like stress. It's, I don't know if it's like the weight's protective in a way, like as far as survival goes. Um, mm -hmm. But for whatever reason, it's... yeah. Yeah, I think that gets very different for different people, but definitely mm -hmm. the cortisol is up. Obviously, mm -hmm. when you're in fight or flight, the body draws the sugars from the muscles and from your the glucagon from your liver to run away or to fight. Mm -hmm. So then you sit with with elevated. So I've had a client that's have had high insulin, but she's eating perfectly healthy. She's eating mm -hmm. low um, carbs, all the things, but and she had the monitor on her arm, and she was having these glucose spikes, and that was all just cortisol. So the body draws that sugar out and then you get the same as if you had a slice of cake. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? It's I know. the same thing that happens. So yeah. physiologically. Yeah. Right. It just puts into perspective, right? It's the same thing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. This is awesome. I could probably talk to you for like three hours. I guess <laughs> I should probably go. Okay. So I know, right. Um, okay. So do you have anything that, you, or where can they find you? I know they're probably going to want a lot of information or more details specific to their individual needs. So um where can they find you? I can post this also with the um, the video, but um, yeah. Do you have a website yeah, or on my website? They can download my free eating guide as well. It's on my website. It's anavaliving.com. Okay. And then um, also Anava Living um, on Instagram. Okay. How do you, how do you spell it? Um, oh God, you spell it. A-N-A-V-A-H-A. -A -A. Uh -huh. What does it mean? It actually means humility in Hebrew. So for me, that was a special uh, meaning that I, it means like living in, like we each get this God-given bubble that we need to live in. And we don't need to, we don't want, we mustn't live a too small life, but we mustn't also live such a big life that we push someone else out of their bubble. So it's That's like cool. just living in your full. Mm, <laughs> I love it. I have to look that one up. <laughs> I love Hebrew. So that's my other thing. I, my family we played a little game a few nights ago and we have these little cards with questions to ask each other for, um, communicate, to communicate together. <clears throat> and look, one of the questions was if you could speak any language besides what you speak, your native language, what would it be? And I was like, I would totally learn Hebrew. It's and my husband's <gasps> like, it's not a very, like, it's kind of a rough language. <laughs> and like, I don't know if I actually want to speak it, but just maybe just, just understand it. it, like the meaning, because there's so much depth and meaning to the words. Um, 100%. Yeah, so yeah, I have to look that one up now too. <laughs> That's really, okay, so then you're, I'm going to type your website in. So how do you, how do you spell it again? A -N I, mean, I think it's A-N-A-V-H-A. A-N-A-V-H-A dot com? Living, I'm living, okay. L-I-V-G. Okay.
and I put your, and then, so the, the guide you have there, what is, is it a nutritional guide or what do you have that you're sharing? Yeah, I, it's, it's a nutrition guide. Oh, it's just how to build your healthy hormone plate. So it just gives you oh. ideas that you can choose from your complex carbs, from your protein. It kind of um, helps you teach you how to build your own perfect plate. And then it, with a few recipe ideas of how you can combine them. Okay. And I think it's very similar to what you do. So it's very by individual. So you, depending on how many carbs you want to eat, you choose the complex carbs that you do add to your meal. Okay. But it makes it breaks it down really nice and nice and easily to kind of start if you're not sure like where do I start healing my hormones food wise. Mm, that's great. I know it's so nice to have like a tool to just have in front of you. I'm the type of person that loves like if someone could just tell me exactly what to do, then I can do it. <laughs> But if I'm just kind of like given things I'm like, okay, this sounds nice. Like all the, the recommendations you made about um, healthy habits. I love it because it's things that I can definitely do. I just need to be reminded and, and the why it's like, oh, I really need to do that because my why is strong. Like I'm not sleeping well. Okay. So I really need to start doing these other things or whatever it is for each person. And post-it notes, those are amazing. If there's something that you want to remember, like flax, or you want to remember to drink your apple cider vinegar, or whatever you choose, just put the, put a post-it note on. If you want to chew well, we're not chewing enough. Like put a post-it oh. note on your dining room table and say chew well. Because okay. we forget we oh. forget these small insignificant things that are needle shifters. So okay. I say post-it notes. If there's three, choose three things that you want to focus on for the next two weeks. Just choose three out of this talk. Okay. Write it on a post-it note. Put it where you could see it, and you okay. it's amazing then how the reminder will, yeah. will help because we forget. It's not because we don't want to; it's just because we forget. Your life happens, and we go back to our regular uh, patterns and behaviors and stuff. So, okay, well, awesome. Well, thank you for hanging out with me. I love it. Um, so uh, you're also she's also in our private Facebook group. So, um, if you have questions for Karen, you can ask her there or reach out to her on Messenger. Is Messenger okay? Yes, Facebook. perfect. Okay. On okay. My, on my the time. Yeah. And, and then if any of you um, have questions for me about anything, and then I'll probably defer to her if there's hormone things that I don't know the answers to, <laughs> or it's not my specialty. So we'll, we'll use her in our, in our circle of um, our tribe. So it's anyway, well, yeah, thank you, Karen. I love it. And then I might call on you for some more information in the future. So anytime. Thank yeah. you, Cynthia. Thank you Thanks so again. much for having me. It was you're, an honor to be you're here. You're welcome. It's, yeah, it's a pleasure. Thank you. Okay. Have a great evening. Okay. You too. Have a great day. Bye. Bye.